Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 52 of Daryl20's uh, Let's Play Enigmatico series, where uh, I'm just babysitting my uh, little demon here, whose job is to process some ores, and it looks like he's doing a good job. Uh, the, the backlog of all the stuff that needs to be processed is mostly done. It's, uh, it's still clearing out a bunch of the tin that needed to be smelted, but uh, it's... Surprisingly close to getting cleaned up, so I added a few more things to the export bus here. Uh, lapis, nether quartz, and emerald chunks are now being processed. Doing a great job. Um, you know, and we've got that obviously importing directly into the system by the filter here, rather than going into the redstone furnace. And that all looks pretty good to me. So, uh, he's chilling, and it occurred to me, now that we've got auto-processing of stuff up and running for the most part, and I don't know if this is going to be usable in what I'm about to start playing with, but but I'm going to start playing with it and we're going to find out. So what I would like to do today is check out this Resourceful Bees mod. Uh, the Resourceful Bees mod, everybody is all about. Uh, a lot of people in the comments have been asking for this for a while. Uh, and I need to figure out 50 shades of bees. Okay, there's a book, so that's good at least. That's good, at least. Oh, look at all this. Cool. Breed time upgrade, breeder upgrades, hive upgrades. It looks like there's stuff to figure out. Um, so our plan for today, Bpedia. Use on a bee to see its information. Sounds kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think, is there a bee's chapter in the quest book kind of thing? Uh, I got some artifacts. That was cool. Hmm. Cool. Uh, things and stuff. So is there a bees chapter in here? Is there a resourceful bees? Storage, technology, magic. Resourceful bees, hooray, sweet. All right, uh, yes, there will be many puns. <laughs> resourceful bees is a new take on resource generation utilizing one of the latest entities introduced to minecraft our buzzy little friends the bees uh the quest line should help explain some of the basics of proper beekeeping mutations and resource extraction and tiers of bees in their hives the bpd you receive from this quest is your guide to resourceful bees it is generally your best source of information on bee breeding mutations traits and more sweet so we'll get an empty bee jar and a beepedia okay so empty bee jars is just glass Pretty simple. You can also filled bee jar iron bee becomes mana bee. Oh, these bees make mana? Because that's kind of cool. Anyway, we'll figure it all out. Oh, nice. Look at all. Resourceful bees, Beepedia. Found bees, 0 out of 73. Browse the wiki. Found a bug or an issue. There's a GitHub link. Uh, support us on Patreon and a Discord server. Nice. You can search. That's pretty cool. Look at all the bees, traits, and honey. So this is bees, this is traits, and this is honey. Okay. Seems pretty easy enough. Aluminum bees, info, mutations, traits, honeycomb, breeding. Oh, that's cool. Look at all the stats. There's a lot to learn about. Flowers that they like to do. Blizz bee, boo bee, brass bee, bronze bee, clay bee, clockwork bee. That's pretty cool. So this is the info, how long it lives, health, passive, poisonous, loses, stinger, okay. Some attributes that I don't quite, I mean, kind of, maybe? Mutations. Oh, that's cool. Does it turn wood into, that's kind of, is that what that does? Interesting. There's a lot. Traits can swim, honeycomb, tier one beehive, clockwork honeycombs, and then eventually he makes blocks. Okay, cool. So it looks like there's some, so there's beehives, and then there's four tiers of apiary. Okay, that's neat. Spawning. Biomes. Huh. Does this mean they can spawn naturally in the world? I don't know. But you can also breed two clockwork bees to get a clockwork bee. Interesting. Bronze bee. Parents. Item mutations. Oh. Copper block. Bronze bee. Spawn egg. Oh. That's cool. 
So a tin B with a copper block can make a bronze B spawn egg. That's neat. Okay. I'm just kind of poking around in this guide thing here. Sooty B, parents, children. Water plus sooty equals lapis. Oh, neat. Entity mutations. Glowstone B turns a sooty B into a blaze B. <laughs> this is looking interesting. It looks like there's a lot. It looks like there's a lot here. Um, let's also get our tome dude. Is this bee thing in here? Resourceful bees would be... Yes! Sweet. There's a book, too. Welcome to Resourceful Beekeeper. Uh, this guide is much less filled with bee erotica than it is information about beekeeping. We hope that it serves you well in understanding the basics. Please keep in mind that most, if not all, bees are added by pack developers. Cool. Alright, so bee basics, honeycomb basics, centrifuge basics. I guess my job today is to learn a little bit about bees. I'm excited to check it out. Um... Because, like I said, it's it's a, it's another one of those like mods that I've never played with. Sounds really cool. Um, very interested in seeing what the deal is. And uh, let's get started, shall we? I'm gonna flip through this book just a little bit um, off camera because lots of people have commented they don't like seeing me read on camera, so I'll avoid doing that for you guys. And we'll be back in a minute once I'm ready. All right, so reading through the B basics chapter, which is the first chapter here. Uh, B mutation, some bees can mutate objects in world. So basically it converts, like you place a block in the world, the bee will do stuff to it and turn it into another block. I think that's what we saw earlier uh, with some things. So that's pretty neat. Um, different, everything's configurable, it looks like. So this mod looks like it's not so much like here's a bunch of stuff, but here's a framework for mod pack makers to set up whatever they want. So I'm assuming that this pack has been highly customized because that's kind of the point of the mod, it looks like to me. Uh, bee breeding, as you would expect, you can be breed two types of bees and sometimes they'll generate another kind of bee. Uh, you'll have to feed them and it's an in-world thing, but apiaries do allow you to breed stuff in the apiary, which I haven't read up too much on yet. Bees will spawn in their biomes that are customized um, and it'll generate um, bee nests, right, beehives. So that'll be cool. When nests spawn in the world, they make bee pre-filled. So that's pretty neat too. <clears throat> and then bee traits, there's just a bunch of different traits. It doesn't go too much into them. So that's what I've read so far. Some useful items. The bee jar, which we've already got a few of, lets you capture bees and transport them. So that's cool. It looks like you just right-click on them. And when you release them, it wipes the flower and hive positions while the rest of the bees' memories and data are retained. So that actually looks like a really useful item for finding and, and bringing bees home. Uh, the bee box works just like the jar, except that it can carry up to 10 bees at once. Nice. That sounds cool. Okay. Uh, the honey dipper. Right-click a bee to select it. Right-click an appropriate flower to set its flower position. Or right-click a hive to set its hive position. Shift right-click to clear the selected bee. Setting a bee's position will also clear the selected bee. That's cool. That's cool. We're going to want one of those for sure. Uh, and the Bpedia we've already checked out a little bit. So there are four tiers of beehive that you can get, and there's also the apiary, which looks like a multi-block, but I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, but the gist is, if you want to uh, get the generation of custom honeycombs, which clearly we're going to want to do, then we absolutely need to use these tiered beehives. There's four tiers, and it looks like they mostly modify the number of bees and the number of honeycombs you can get in them, and it also will modify the time, so it makes it look like it runs faster. So a couple more items that are going to be useful to have. Uh, the scraper works like shears on a, on a honeycomb, on a beehive, like the vanilla beehive. Uh, however, unlike shears, it only pulls one comb out at a time rather than all of them. Uh, but you do have to take all combs out in order to reset the honey level. Uh, and then the smoker is cool. It looks like an item version of the campfire. So basically you craft the smoker and then you can right click on a hive to, you know, settle the bees so they don't get angry when you collect the honeycombs. So I'm definitely going to get myself a smoker. Uh, and the scraper. They look like two slam dunk items to get early on. Uh, now the bee smoker needs a smoke canister, which needs a campfire, and uh, a little bit of leather to go along with this. And that shouldn't be a big deal. Cool. Bee smoker. Hold shift for info. Right click it. Right click the hive to smoke it. Bees won't get angry for 30 seconds when shearing honeycomb. Nice. I like that. That is super cool. Um, <clears throat> I really like that because... I don't know, part of me doesn't like the whole concept of building campfires under all the bees, you know, hives if, if, you, if you don't need to. So that's kind of, I like that. Um, so we need to find some bee nests or a beehive from vanilla. Okay, that's cool. 
So we will probably need to get some honeycomb. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. We can probably go find some out and about in the world. Yay, bee safety and stuffs. Uh, let's also keep an eye on the on the quests here. So bee nests. You must take care of bees because you're definitely a keeper. Uh, the most basic housing method for nests, when they lack inventory, they can be upgraded to hives, which grant you more control over population and production of your bees. Note, bee nests only produce standard honeycombs regardless of the type of bee it houses. So the vanilla bee nest um, is not a good thing to get, right? Uh, let's see, there's tier one, tier two. These look like just you check the box and complete them. So I'm not going to do those yet until I'm super ready. Uh, a bunch of different combs you can get. Vanilla bee mechanics. Okay, let me read this real quick. All right, so this looks like it's just, you know, information on how vanilla bees work. So that's easy enough. Um, bee boxing I might wind up doing. So let's get, let's make sure I have my shears on me. And I'm going to go out and about in the world and see what we can find. Cool. And hopefully what we can find are some bees and some beehives. Now, uh, what I wouldn't mind having, let's start off with something simple maybe. Can I search or no? It's just alphabetical order. Hello, zombie. No. Uh, let's start with something what I assume would be relatively simple, an iron bee. So combine a sandy and a forest bee to get an iron bee. Or two iron bees. Okay, fair enough, right? Um, sandy and a forest bees. So sandy bees... Don't look like they have any parents breeding. Yeah, no, they don't. Just Sandy Bee and Sandy Bee. Okay, cool. And then Forest Bee, I assume, is similar. Same deal. Has children, but no parents. Okay, cool. So what we want to do is find those. So we should check spawning. Um, so spawning of Forest Bees, light level any biomes, basically any foresty looking biome. Lots and lots of forest biomes. Uh, and then for the sandy bee, I assume is going to be in a desert biome. Yes. Cool. So let's go look around in some of these biomes, and the best way to explore would be to equip my, this dude. Huzzah! Out and about. So let's see if we can find some bees. What do we got? Oh, that's a cactus. It looked a little bit like a beehive for a second, didn't it? Didn't it, though? But I'm going to look. I'm going to find some beehives and we'll see what we can find out. Um, now I'm suspecting that what we're probably gonna wanna do, my understanding is, if I'm, if I'm getting this right, first we're gonna wanna capture some bees in our bee jars, but then also we're gonna wanna get the honeycomb out of the, you know, world gen beehive so we can make a regular beehive. Now what's this over here? Hello, sir. An Akashia bee nest from Resourceful Bees. That seems cool, smoked false. So if I wanna smoke it, I can do that. Smoked true, and you can see how much time is left. I love it. Cool. Now can I shears this out? Now this is, uh, this will possibly, can I do this? Oh, hello. Sooty honeycomb. Sandy honeycomb. So I got all the honeycomb out. Bees, two out of two. So in theory, there's two bees in there, and I would like to capture them if I can. Oh, hello, Sandy Bee. And hello, city bee. Neat. They just... Okay, because I... Maybe because I emptied the hive. Is that how it works? Will they go out and pollinate if I empty the hive? That seems cool. That seems cool. Now, smoke time is, like, stuck at 29. And smoked is remaining true. Maybe... Uh, I don't know. Is there more stuff in there? This might be just telling me what it can produce. Okay. Maybe because those are the types of bees that were in there. All right. I'm down. Let's look around for some more beehives. Did I see something over here? I see a bee. Aw, oh, poor bee. What happened? He flew into a cactus. He's not the smartest bee in the world. So where was his hive then? Shouldn't there be a hive nearby? You would think. Oh, there's something. It's a roadrunner. Uh, what do we got here? One out of two bees. Hello, Sooty Bee. I'm capturing you. So smoke it. There's no, there's nothing in it right now, but that's okay. I heard a buzz. I'm hearing a buzz. 
Am I crazy? What are all the particle effects from? Is it just from the aloe plants? I don't actually know. If I take this off my hotbar, do the particle effects stop? No, they don't. Okay. I was I thought for some reason maybe if I was holding that thing it was causing the particle effects. I don't know. I'm learning. I'm learning. Now here's another Akashia bee nest. Let's smoke it. Let's try to get any honeycomb that might be in there. Nothing. And there is apparently a bee inside. Um, maybe he'll come out by himself? Is there a trick to getting the bees to come out? I don't know. Alright, so I just broke one and that made the bee very angry. Which is a surprise to no one. And he stung me. Cool. And I'm poisoned. I just broke the beehive to see what would happen. And the bee popped out, which is, you know, obviously what you would probably expect. Alright, let's see if I can find... Now, did I get... Oh, I did. I got the Akashia bee nest. Nice. So is this a tier 1 bee? Can I upgrade him? I think that's a tier 1 beehive. Yes, I do believe that to be the case. Maybe not. I don't know. It might just be a bee nest versus a beehive. I know they're different in vanilla, so maybe they're different in this mod as well. Oh man, somebody's world gen got a little derpy. Alright, let's see if we can find any more bees and or beehives. And remember, I do have my uh, ender pouch if I want to send some junk home. Hey look, I found a red mushroom bee nest, and there was an RGB in it. Neato. Does that show me any details about... Uh, no ish I think any bee can do certain things so yeah we'll figure it out but anyway new type of bee that's cool I might wind up uh, putting all these bee dudes in here because we're starting to get a lot of them so I'm now wandering through a forest hoping to find some forest bees and what have we here in front of me regular bees just regular old vanilla bees, but they also say they're from resourceful bees. So I'm going to snag one, because why not? Now, part of me is not thrilled with the fact that I only have one more of these bee catcher little jar things, but I think we can manage. Uh, oh, forest bee. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. Hello, forest bee. Nice. All right. Nice to know that that is a thing. Uh, do I have a... I did. I found a sandy waystone while I was out and about, so I'm going to just temporarily, and then we can go to home. Cool. And then we can get some jars. And that would be cool. And then we can go back out and then break. Aha. And I'm just going to snag a few more bees while I'm out and about, if I can. Uh, I wouldn't mind at least one more forest bee. Uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. And if I could find some more honeycombs or something, that would be nice too. What are you? You are a Yeti bee. Okay. I mean, I'm going to... If I find a new type of bee, I'm going to pick him up, right? If, even if I don't know what he does. I think I think that's smart. Oh, another forest bee. Yes. Now, where's your hive, buddy? I mean, are the beehives up in the trees? I'm not seeing them on the ground here, so they might be in the trees somewhere. We'll look around. Oh. Beehives, where are you? I mean, if the bee's flying around, there's got to be a hive, right? Is that something? No, that's just the top of wood. Uh, oh, there's something. There's something. I spied a vanilla bee nest. Let's make sure we've got our smoker ready. Alright, nothing doing there. Continuing to look. Ooh, found a bee nest. Hello, bee nest. Buzz, buzz. Now, if you want to get your bees out of there quickly, you can kind of just... You can either wait for them to come out on their own... Because it says there's one out of two in there, right? So this bee nest can hold two. There's currently one. Ooh, an icy bee. Have I gotten one of those yet? I don't think so. Uh, and then eventually he'll pop out. See, now it's zero out of two. That's the bee that flew out of there. It's a vanilla bee. I mean, yeah, why not? I've got enough of the jars at this point, so I might as well. All right, so speaking of quests, uh, some combs. We found some combs, so that's nice. Uh, we found some bee nests, also nice. Got some, uh, Got some good stuff from that. Some extra shears, probably good. Let's take our bee nests and upgrade them to a tier one hive, right? So a tier one beehive is just an existing beehive or nest that we found in the world surrounded by some grass. Uh, now, 
did we find we found some Akashia bee nests, and that should be upgradable to the tier one beehive, I assume. So let's get uh, some tall grass. Yes. That should be cool. At this point I just wanna I just wanna break the shears. Okay, so all that goes away. And then you can be upgraded to the tier one. Cool, tier one beehive. Now from there we can upgrade to a tier two beehive, which is gonna need some beeswax and some honeycombs. Now I think the beeswax, the only way we can get that uh, is courtesy of centrifuging honeycomb. Yes, that looks to be about right. Cool. And looks like centrifuge is some of the ways we're going to get resources out of this. It looks like there's a few ways you can get resources from this mod, uh, and, and centrifuge is one of them. So uh, an upgrade tier based version of the standard bee nest. The higher tier the beehive is, the more bees it can house, the faster it will run, and the more it will produce. Note, beehives allow the production of modded honeycombs, which can be further processed for resources. Sweet. All right, so real quick nap. And then what I want to see is what my sand bees and my, I'm assuming sand bees produce sand, right? So sandy bees, that would be you. Um, your flowers are going to be all kinds of things. Mutations, you can convert gravel into sand 100% of the time when you fly over it. That's cool. Amount of mutations available performed per pollination. Okay, that's neat. Um, the honeycomb produced is a sandy honeycomb. And those sandy honeycombs are, we're going to figure it out. And then it can spawn gravel bees, sand bees, iron bees, which is what we were after. Okay, that's cool. So let's see what sandy honeycomb does. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I'm assuming there's a way to centrifuge it into sand, right? Like that would make... Oh, I got the ice shard trinket. Did I get some other trinket too? 30 XP levels to unlock another trinket slot, right? Let's let's check that out real quick. Side side thingy. Dealing more knockback than hitting enemies. Prevents endermen from near you teleporting. Chance of dropping bones. Dark egg. Triple rolls from fishing. Ride a saddled pig. See invisible entities. Improve your mining speed. Starfish. Gain extra EXP from hitting enemies. That's kind of cool. Ice Shard. Provide you with Frostwalker. I mean, I like that. Extra EXP never goes wrong. All right. So Sandy Honeycomb in a centrifuge. Ooh, there's also a nutritional liquefier. Cool. Uh, that's actually mechanisms nutritional. But it produces sand with a chance of making glass. Okay. Cool. And if you give it a honey bottle, it'll actually produce honey too. Nice. Okay, that's cool. So we're gonna have to look into the centrifuge pretty, pretty soon. There's also manual centrifuge from resourceful bees. Centrifuge controller into resources using RF. Elite centrifuge controller. Hold control for multi-block inflow. Sweet. That looks cool. Should we try making one of these real quick, just in preparation for what we're going to be doing? I would say yes. I would say yes, right? And then from power, we'll get a quick ender gate ready to roll. I'm just going to pop this out here for now until we get a better idea of what kind of stuff we're in for. Nifty. And if I were to get glass bottles and just pop them in here. Now, did we get some honeycombs? We did. I'm going to probably want to hang on to them just in case. I mean, obviously, we're going to be making more of them, but we're going to have to figure things out. So let's place our tier one beehive. And you know what? I've got actually a bunch of honeycomb. Let's make that thing that binds bees. I might need wax for it. I might need wax for it. What, where, where was that? This thing. I do need beeswax. I do need beeswax, so let's get uh, a honeycomb. Actually, give me a few of these. I don't know how many we're gonna need, but let's just put one in there and see what happens. All right, nice little spinning animation. Ah, we got sugar, okay, cool. 
Do you have a chance? You have a 25% chance to do beeswax. So in theory, I put four of these in here, and there's a decent chance we'll get one, but statistics. So, uh, Also, enable redstone control, display fluid outputs. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. And I'm assuming tick accelerating is a thing. 100%. Honey bottle. Come on, honeycomb, give me a piece of wax. Of course my RNG failed me. And everyone is shocked, right? No, no one's shocked. No one's shocked that I didn't get beeswax. There we go, finally. All right, I want to I wanna conserve my honeycomb until I have a... I'm going to have a lot eventually. But I want to, you know, be patient. So let's check out this honey dipper, because that looks really cool. BC, what be do? <laughs> There's a whole achievement system. That's awesome. Uh, was there a quest for that? No. Sweet. So now... Let's get our... These are regular bees. These are forest bees. Let's get a couple forest bees out here. And let's also be prepared for a sandy bee. All right. So you can hold four bees, right? Now, how do you breed bees? How do you breed them? What's the deal with breeding bees? So some of these you can get spawn eggs for, which is cool. What's vanilla bee breeding all about? So I'm trying to figure out how breeding works. I think these items underneath here are the items that you feed the bee to breed them. So let's try this real quick. I'm just going to start with breeding a forest bee and a forest bee and see if that kicks out a new forest bee. So it looks like you just need any kind of log. So I'll use my, you know, regular old oak log here. So let's put these guys in the world. Boop and boop. All right. And then are you guys going to get like all, hey, look, food when I hold this in my... Oh, yes, they do. Look at them. They are coming over and landing near me. That's what bees do, right? When you're holding when you're holding their breeding material, right? They will come over and just chill by you. If it's not in my hand, they're just going to lose interest. If it is in my hand, they'll be right back. Oh, look, they said. It's a log. So now if I boop and boop. Got it. Got it. So that's how it works. Avert your eyes. Hey, look, there's a baby bee. Now, can I click you and then click you? Sweet. And then shift right click to... Sweet. Now I'm assuming that you're going to want... Now can I force feed you to grow up faster? I think I can. It looks like that's working, right? Oh look, he comes and chills by me again. Oh yeah, that, that definitely works. Just like with other creatures. And now they're like, ah, you don't have food for me anymore, I'm out of here. Nice, I like that. Okay, cool. Super cool. Alright, now we want flowers, right? Uh, and I'm just gonna put like corn flowers nearby. Does it does it tell me in this here what kind of flowers he likes? Um, there's gonna be a lot, isn't there? Corn flowers is on the list. Works for me. All right. So we'll let them breed with the nearby flowers or whatever. Do their thing. Now they've they've been bound to that hive. So in theory, that's their home now, right? Um, and I'm gonna get the sand bee out. And the sand bee, I think, just needs sand to breed. Uh, we'll find out how right we are about that. So if I hold the sand, he's going to be all interested. Yeah, he is. What's up, dude? But now I just want to doot, doot, doot. Now, can I also tell you to, like... He doesn't look like he binds to that. What was the other thing that this did? It lets you bind... Where's the essential tools thing? Shift and right click to clear selected B. Okay, setting a B's position will also clear the selected B. Uh, right click an appropriate flower to set its position or right click a hive to set its hive position. Okay, so I have to re-right click the flower. Or the B, I mean. So you and that flower position has been set. Sweet, okay, cool. Forest B selected, Forest B position. All right, and look, they're, ho they're heading into the hive now. Now, where'd that baby bee go? Which may not be a baby anymore because it's been enough time that maybe it hasn't been. It, it may not be a baby anymore. Is it okay for a bee to access a the same flower, like multiple bees tap into the same flower? I don't really know, to be honest with you. 
But it looks like he's going to go ahead and, and pollinate. And then I'm thinking you'll have, like, the, the yellow pollen thing happen. Did he pollinate? Oh, hello. Bees out. That's cool. Uh, bees, zero out of four. Honey level zero. Smoked false. So they're pollinating. Are they going to have the drippy particle effect thing? This is cool, though. This is a little bit better than, like, forestry bees, right? Because there's, like, actual bees flying around doing things. I like it. I saw particle effects. I saw particle effects. Sweet. Did I bind you to a flower yet? You're bound now, buddy. That's cool. So there should be another forest bee around here somewhere, in theory. In theory, there's another forest bee around here somewhere, floating around. Couldn't tell you where, per se. But he should exist. So now here's a cool thing we can take a look at. Um, bronze bee. There was something that I had seen earlier that let me look at the mutations. Beehive. We can ponder it. Um, check this out. So this is bees dripping on crops, right? That's that mechanic. Uh, pollen as mutagen, right? Resourceful bees can pollinate and trigger things to happen. Um, Pollen can mutate things up to two blocks above. For example, the iron bee can mutate stone into iron ore. Sweet. It can also mutate a block of coal into a steel bee egg. Also neat. The IC bee can mutate water into blue ice. Nice. And there's a lot of examples of that. Now what's cool is another thing in Ponder, they suggest a build for doing things. This is a good structure for mutating bees. Uh, bees place the bees you'd like to mutate here. Uh, it's a little bit quick how fast it moves. Um, and since things can be mutated through solid blocks, we can use a trap door to hold the bee in place. We'll place the blaze bee here, let it collect some nectar from the magma cake. Now that the blaze bee has gathered nectar, it will travel over its hive and it'll mutate the bee under it. Cool? So, like, here's, like, a neat little recommended build on how to set up an automation system for, 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 for mutating bees. So that's cool. So now your honey level should be going up, potentially, as the bees do their work. Now, we can also speed things up with higher tier beehives which will presumably be able to access better and better, right? So beehive tier two, those are apiaries. Well, well, I haven't even looked into apiaries yet, but I assume they're a higher tech and, you know, is gonna require some crafting and probably some resources and I'm not quite there yet. Those are apiaries. Where are the beehives? Here they are. So tier two beehive requires beeswax and honeycomb. Tier 3 beehive requires a block of beeswax and blocks of honeycomb. And finally, tier 4 beehives require um, some other kinds of honey blocks and some honeycombs. Cool. Hey, guys. What's up? Ooh, honey level 2. Nice. So the honey level max on a tier 1. Max honey is 4. Max honeycombs is 5. Um... Max bees, max honeycombs go up for the higher tiers. So you can have more bees living in a higher tier beehive. The apiary, nine unique bees. Hive time modification, 40%. Now I think this is a multi-block, 50% for tier four. And these guys output honeycomb, three and six, and these guys output honeycomb blocks, one and two. So higher tier apiaries yield to higher higher yields of things. Um, cool, lots of stuff to figure out as we go. And we can W to ponder it too, I think. Well, maybe not. It's all good. 
So I guess I wait for the honey level to hit four, because that's what a tier one beehive is capable of holding. Max bees four, max honeycombs five. I'm not sure on the difference between honey and honeycombs. Are they the same-ish? Ender Beacon. Consumes honey to protect your bees. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to look into that eventually. Eventually. Okay. Better sleep through this night. I don't think bees like it being dark out, right? Now, it's a little bit bothering me that one of my bees didn't come home. But I'm pretty sure there's two forest and one sandy bee in there. What other bees could we put in? A sooty bee, uh, the RG bee, which are cool, icy bee, forest bee, regular vanilla bee. Let's do the, I mean, sooty seems super common. Let's see what sooty's all about. What's his deal? Where's sooty bee? Am I missing sooty bee? Oh, there he is. Somehow I missed him. Um, cool. Mutations. He will turn some stone into coal. Or, that's neat. Uh, he will make sooty honeycomb. And children, he can make lapis. Redstone. And sooty. And then he can also turn sooty bees into blaze bees with a glowstone bee. Okay, that's neat. There's a lot. There's a lot of cool stuff. I can't wait to set this up because it looks nice. Honey level five. I think the beehive is full. So now what we want to do is this. And this gets one out at a time. This will extract all at a time. But we can, if I just do that, it should snag them all. Sweet. Woody and Sandy. Awesome. Now the Sandy will make sand and glass, as we know. And then the woody honeycombs will make wood. Okay, I'm down with that. Forget tree farms. It'll also make illuminating honey. Well, that's interesting. What's that do? It's a meal. It can also turn into illuminating honey blocks. Um, it has thermal temperatures, and that's neat. Uh... Cool. I don't know exactly what it does. Illuminating honey blocks. Okay. Is it just another type of food? Is it like honey, but or is there something specifically neat about it that it does? It looks like it's used to make the Bpedia, but it looks like lots of different kinds of honey bottles can do that. Uh, calming potion, but that's also any kind of honey bottle. I'm just curious if this is something specific or not. It looks like it's just another type of honey. I'm wondering how many different types of honey there are. Uh, that's cool. Oh yeah, look, there's a bunch of them. Redstone honey bottle. Netherite honey bottle. What's the redstone honey bottle do? It looks like it's kind of the same thing. That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder if it like if there's a way to turn that into redstone or not. I honestly have no idea. I honestly have no idea. Now, tick accelerating is a thing. We got to wrap up the episode, by the way, because it is 100% that time. It's making more noises, so that's cool. Hey, hey, it's full again. Nice. Awesome. All right, so we have a lot of automation ahead of us. We're gonna to wanna to start breeding bees. We're gonna to wanna to start automating honeycombs and beehives. Uh, we're gonna to wanna to look into setting up some structures like we saw that can be used to like encourage bee stuff. Um, for example, if we wanted to make iron ore, uh, we would wanna look up the iron bee. Okay, uh, and he can turn stone into iron ore when he flies over it with pollen, right? The other thing he can do is he will make iron honeycombs, right? Uh, iron honeycombs can be centrifuged into iron chunks. 
Nice. So not only will he convert iron regular stone into iron blocks, but he'll also produce iron chunks with his honeycombs. So multiple ways to get iron from that. And then there's also iron honey. That's a very low percent chance. No idea if that iron honey turns into something, right? Just not a clue. I guess we'll... I guess we'll find out at some point as we progress. <laughs> um, but for now, it's wrapping up point. So, ooh, that's cool. Industrious bee. That's neat. All kinds of different bees. There's a lot of bees. There's a lot of different ways to get bees. There's a lot of fun to be had with bees. The main thing is it's wrapping up point, though. So for now, Delta 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and play more with resourceful bees. For now, take it easy. <laughs>